On today's Church TechCast Q&A, blogging, an AV booth in a bad location, and quality, speed, and price. Hello, everyone, and welcome again to another episode of the Church TechCast Q&A Show. My name is Paul Allen Clifford, and I am your host, as usual, on this show. This show is pre-recorded. Um, it's showing live on Friday, February 7th, 2014, but I'm actually recording it on Thursday, February 6th, 2014 now. You might be wondering, well, uh, Paul, how are you doing that? Well, it's actually quite simple. I'm recording this ahead of time, and then I will upload it to my host, and they have a feature where I can set it to play when I want it to play. And that host is churchstreaming.tv. Now, I love churchstreaming.tv, and you're probably tired of hearing me say how much I love the work that they do, but this is just a great example of one of the features that they have that have has made what I do so much easier so I'm actually right now as you're watching this I am in a minivan on my way to Washington DC for a freelance gig that I'm doing this weekend so I knew that I wouldn't be able to answer your questions while I was speeding down the highway at 70 some odd miles an hour at least not until I have a uh, higher quality cellular connection. So instead, what I decided to do was record this in advance, and then I can upload it to their servers and tell them which show it should be played for and when that show starts, and it will just start playing. So that's something that's really, really cool. And if you want to look at that and other features like iOS streaming or a Roku channel, head on over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash church streaming and you can get your free trial today. I think you'll be very pleased with their service and their flat rate billing so there's never a surprise at the end of the month with them. So without further ado, let's get into your questions. Now these questions were all either sent to me directly or for the most part they're in forums that I frequent on a weekly basis but if you want to interact with me just head over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash contact and all my contact information is there so if you're an email person it's paul at trinitydigitalmedia.com if you're a phone person 1-877-763-3246 or 1-877-POD-ECHO will get you in touch with me if you just like to leave comments. Hey, leave a comment right there. Any of those things will work perfectly fine. And I would love to get uh, your questions, comments, even snide remarks over there. So let's start out with the first question. The first question is from Christy Shanks over on Christians in Business Community on Google+. And she says, do you have a blog on your website? I currently have one. I've always been into blogging, but I haven't done much on my website so far. I want to change this, but is there much benefit to having a blog that isn't necessarily on a blogging platform? I kind of feel like I'm being led to focus more on my business during this slow period that I'm having, but I'm not sure if that specific area is a fruitless endeavor. Well, that's a great question, Christy. And the answer is, no, it's not fruitless. Google is really good at finding words. So the more words you put on your website, the more likely they will send people to your website. It's even better if those words have something to do with what you're doing. So blogging is a great way to do that. Now, I would not blog on WordPress.com, I wouldn't blog on Blogger, I wouldn't blog anywhere other than your own server. Um, and by your own server, I mean, you know, rented server space from 
West Host or HostGator or one of these companies because what you're doing if you use a third party is you're sending traffic to them not to you and if for some reason you inadvertently violate their terms of service or you make them mad or they change their rules or whatever and they lock you out all that traffic still goes to them but not to you so you don't have control when you are blogging on the third party service so I wouldn't use that I would install WordPress that's wordpress.org where you can download the software and uh, stick that on your server and get it working that way uh, a lot of these hosting companies have the ability to do um, like an auto install and go right ahead that's the same WordPress just don't use wordpress.com because that's actually a service on another host and stuff like that so I just wouldn't go that direction I would in fact host it myself with uh, hosted space and I think that you'll find that you'll get more traffic and more traffic means more business and more people that you can help Dan Krask again on Christians in Business says this week I've been reminded of the old saying speed quality and price pick two all three cannot coexist what is your take on this adage in business I think that that's bunk now generally speaking it's true but it's not always the case that they can't coexist because you can invest in things that will increase your speed and quality ahead of time so that when the time comes you can whip out something really fast really cheap uh, of a really high quality it's absolutely possible to do so let me give you an example from the video world if I were to invest in a high-end video switcher nice lighting and I spend years learning how to use all those things by the way all these are true about me um, then I can whip out a video really fast and it can be really high quality so what you're watching right now will be basically done when I hit stop so that's pretty fast and I've spent years learning how to do video you'll notice that I've got three-point lighting happening even here in the home office so I know what I'm doing I've got some uh, equipment that enables me to do that that I've invested in over time and I think that it's absolutely possible to do something fast of a high quality uh, for not very much money once you have a baseline down now if you're starting from zero that's absolutely it's nearly impossible to do something fast high quality and cheap but if you have already invested time and money then each additional version is very fast to do it's very easy to do it's can be very high quality so that's something for you to keep in mind at the end of this you will see a video that I created for nothing uh, yesterday in about 10 minutes so it's it's just the video on the end of things but I think that it's uh, high quality and it didn't cost me any um, money and I did it very quickly so that will be a perfect example of what I'm talking about here so I think that that's the exception um, if you're starting from scratch yes that's true but if you've got years and years into it you can absolutely do it uh, not that you would because your time is valuable it wouldn't be the case that you would necessarily not charge someone more uh, you need to recoup the cost that you've sunk into that cost that you've sunk into equipment but still you can do quite a lot okay Ed Siminowski on the church tech group says we're getting ready to build an AV booth in our choir loft uh, right there that's a bit of a problem but you know you do with what you can so right now we have two iMac workstations one audio with the 16 channel mixing board and a second for lyrics projection I know it's not the ideal location for audio 
but it's the only open space we can use in our small historic sanctuary. Does anyone have any helpful hints they can share? Clever forms of cable management or mistakes that they've made that they would like to see others avoid? Taking some advice from the uh, folks at CTW, uh, we're using a 4x4 four four half lapped frame with a plywood and laminate countertop knowing this installation will be transitional. I'm still tossing around ideas for cable management. We'll be upgrading amplifiers, adding additional channels, aux sends, and some video distribution with the next year. I'm looking for inspiration and hoping to make this a one and done project. Okay, for uh, okay, let's talk two things that you mentioned specifically. Uh, bad audio location. You've got basically a couple of things that you can do. You can mix remotely using an iPad, and that's what I would recommend doing first and foremost. Secondly, as a backup option, you can have uh, near-field monitors, little speakers that are EQ'd to exactly the same as it is in the room you'll lose some subtle differences but it will be much better than trying to listen to the mains and hearing what they're projecting in the room where sound is bouncing around in different places as opposed to up where you are where it's you're not going to hear the same sound so I think as my top thing I would have a remote mixing ability so that you can go down into the room and tweak things as opposed to going down in the room, hearing it going, oh, I think I know what that is, changing it, going back down to make sure that it changed, only to find out that you were wrong, and then having to repeat that over and over again, not fun at all. So for the audio aspect, that those are the two strategies I'd look into. Secondly, for cable management, in a historical building, there is something called Panduit, P-A-N-D-U-I-T. That's a name brand of cable conduit, and they make conduit that looks like architectural molding. Aha, you say. If it looks like architectural molding and I've got a historic building, I can just put this seemingly architectural molding all over the place. People will think that the place even looks better than before and I'll be hiding all my cables in there. Bingo! That's what you would do. I learned about this when I was in seminary. We uh, had basically the same setup where we had uh, the soundboard in the um, balcony at the back of the room and to get the cables around we used Panduit. So that, that was great. That was before they had uh, digital boards with uh, remote uh, apps but so the guy did run up and down so when I was telling that story I was remembering what I was seeing so that is how I would accomplish that Alex Ertz on CTL the church tech leaders group says so we are a portable campus on a very limited budget. We will be running two projectors via HDMI over a Geffen Cat 6 150 foot converter. Can we split the HDMI at the first converter and send it to the second one on a high quality HDMI cable 50 feet away? No, you just can't. Um, HDMI is engineered to fail. If you've watched these shows before, you know that I hate HDMI. Yet, I have some HDMI. Um, well, I was going to show you an HDMI cable I have here in the office. For very short runs, and by that I mean 10 feet, less, 3 feet, a meter, 3 meters, it's okay. It's not horrid. But you're dealing with such long distances, you cannot use a high-quality HDMI cable for that distance. The spec says with a high-quality cable, you can get to 10 meters. 10 meters is about 33 feet, give or take. Uh, I don't have the conversion perfectly in my head, but that's about 33 feet. So 
33 would be less than 50 and you're trying to go 50 so you would need to use uh, another one of those converters now it's still potentially a problem that you only have one HDMI going to that location and you need two so if you have an HDMI out which I kind of doubt but if you did then that that should work with the HDMI Balin. Uh, Balin is what those converters are called by the way. If on the other hand you do not you need an HDMI DA distribution amplifier not a splitter a distribution amplifier and I think you're gonna run into some problems because of the high definition copy protection HDCP inherent in HDMI when you try and do that so make sure you get an HDCP compliant uh, distribution amplifier and you might be okay uh, in clarifying we found out that you're on VGA I would send back those Geffen converters and get VGA um, get VGA balance and use a VGA DA and it will be beautiful and you'll have no problems HDMI is kind of a pain to work with in a production environment hooking up your blu-ray player to your TV not a problem hooking up a blu-ray player 50 feet away from something problem so keep that in mind as you're looking into that Gregor Harris on CTL hi everyone just a quick quandary do any of you do iMag or record the weekend messages any of you that do iMag uh, or record the weekend messages put makeup on your pastors or presenters our pastor has been asking about the shine that is on his head I think our lights are aimed properly and it's just a case of oily skin I found a couple of how-to videos just wondering what others might be doing thanks for your input so I haven't done it in church but I have ever to be on a video and I might need it right now because I got a little shine on my head um, I've used powder now powder it the only thing that powder does is it gets rid of the shine on your skin so that's exactly what you want your pastor's not going to have longer thicker lashes he's not going to be have deep red sexy lips none of those things that the commercials talk about makeup for powder will just get rid of the shine so I think that that would be an okay thing to do um, just make sure he gets a little tutorial on how to use it puts a little on and that's fine could be that he's a little warm up there too if that's the case if you have a separate chiller for the stage a lot of churches do I know our satellite campus at my church does we did make one mistake though we put the uh, thermostat that controls that in the back of the room and the stage is at the front of the room so if you say we want the stage to be 60 degrees the thermostat is actually checking the temperature at the back of the room where we want it to be 68 so the chiller in the front of the room is going to keep going until it's 60 degrees in the room that was a problem there are remote units you, you can get that hide and everything like that but that's just a mistake I don't want you to make if you go that route if you find that it's not that he's got oily skin it's more that he's uh, hot and sweaty because it's hot and sweaty there so next Chris Rojas on uh, again on CTL is asking about starting a video ministry why does your church do video and how is it utilized he asks so hello everyone the pastor at our church asked if we can do video I'm sure I said sure what's your vision for video he said Chris you need some punctuation dude uh, he said you know video clips and streaming put something together we can present to the leadership team and he proceeded to walk away left my head spinning 
uh, how does your church do video? How is it utilized? How to tell if my church is ready for video? What equipment do we need? Suggestions? What kind of manpower do we need? What else should I be worried about? Thank you all for taking time in advance. Okay, well, uh, Chris, video is the language of our culture. It just is. If you're not doing video, you're not communicating in the most effective way that you can. Look at little children. They watch uh, PBS and uh, kid shows from the time they're just a couple years old, some even younger than that up until senior citizens go to any nursing home in the US and I defy you to find one that does not have a television in it unless it's a place for uh, the retired Amish or something like that. Television is ever present in our culture. It's how we communicate. It's how we educate. It's how we communicate and it's um, just our constant companion so much so that it can be a distraction from other things but that's just a side note there are three things that you can do in your church with video one you can make clips or show clips during service to help out with the sermon or with the point of the morning thing two you can do iMag which is image magnification to eliminate the cheap seats basically you take a camera and you put it up on the screen to make the image larger than life so that people in the back can see more readily third broadcast streaming live streaming video podcasting that sort of thing distribution of the service sounds to me like what your pastor wants to do is number one and number three. I would start with number one. Uh, that can be done with one person, although it's better to be done with more. It can be done with one person who's proficient in video, has a good camera, lighting, sound, and a good computer to edit it with, and good software. And same for a presentation, a computer hooked up into the projector, etc. The other end of the spectrum where you're doing broadcast or streaming or live streaming or video podcasting, that's going to require more manpower and more expensive uh, software uh, and hardware. You're going to need at least two cameras. They should be at least prosumer level. Uh, so you don't want something you could buy at Best Buy, you're going to want something that you can buy at B&H Photo Video or Adorama, that kind of place, somewhere, you know, kind of high end. You're going to need nice tripods. You're going to need better lighting. You're going to need good audio. Audio is the most important of all these. Bad audio equals bad video. Iffy video equals okay video. Do you see? doesn't make any sense, but that's the way that it is, that bad audio equals bad video. Then you will need a switcher to go between the two uh, cameras live. Don't confuse that with a switch. Uh, if you had one HDMI port and two HDMI devices on your TV, you might get an HDMI switch, which would switch between the two, but there will be... A, a hard kind of visible glitch on the screen for a second while it recalibrates you do not want the visible glitch you want it smooth and just beautiful uh, a cut is probably what you're going to be using most of the time then coming out of that switcher you're going to need to go in through a capture device could be as simple as a USB port or as complex as a dedicated card into a computer which is running um, your encoding software and that goes to an encoding uh, host like uh, churchstreaming.tv which is what I use. So here at trinitydigitalmedia.com what I'm using is I've got a Logitech webcam. Here's my hand covering it up. Woo! Uh, the autofocus did not like that. <laughs> so that's why this is a less than ideal camera. You need a better 
camera really uh, for live stuff in your church. I'm going in via USB into my uh, MacBook Pro. My MacBook Pro is running Wirecast right now. I'm not actually streaming this live right now, but I could be. I'm also recording it. So that is the basic workflow that I'm working on. Personnel wise, you need one person for each camera. Remember, you're going to use at least two cameras. That's going to take your video exponentially better than one camera. Two ca cameras bare minimum, three to five is better, but two bare minimum. And that goes into the switcher. Out of the switcher goes into your computer. Your computer encodes, or there are encoding appliances. Uh, I, I'm supposed to get one in for testing. I haven't heard it about that. I need to check in on that from uh, Blackmagic, I believe. Uh, Aja, AJA, -A, also makes good devices of that nature. So then out to the internet to a streaming host. So you upload one stream and then the streaming host sends that to whoever wants to watch it. That's the way that that would work. You could also record and upload to YouTube or um, or Vimeo or another service for streaming but not live streaming video. I would caution you against using YouTube for live streaming. Even though it's free, if uh, you've got an account in good standing, just today on the first show that I recorded, they threw up a copyright notice of a song that's not in there anywhere. I've never even heard of this song. When they said where it was, it was me talking in front of a white background. It's all kinds of screwed up. So I had to dispute that, and that's something that I find very annoying. And in your church, you're going to have the exact same problem. So I, I would absolutely be careful about live streaming to YouTube. There are some benefits, but that, that's a huge downside. Okay, Dennis Green, again on CTL, asks, Howdy, our projector is shot. Seems like a good time to move to a video wall. I'm not a tech guy, I'm the money guy. Can we use four LED flat screens from most any manufacturer, or should we use some specific screen type? I know the software specs to drive the four screen video wall, but this is more about the screens themselves. Thanks for your help. Why are you doing that? I, I'm, I'm just curious, uh, Dennis, because a video wall will be lower quality and cost you more than a new projector. Now, if you're outside and you have no choice, then maybe a video wall's a good thing. If you need to do something... No, I just can't think of a good reason why you would do a video wall. Not nowadays. Uh-uh. Projector is your best choice especially because you already were using a projector, you're going to find it remarkably cheaper, remarkably more reliable to go with a projector. You've got, for some reason, you've got it in your mind that a video wall is better, and I don't know why, because it's not. You're going to have this grid because of the separation. Unless you pay for very expensive uh flat screens that don't have that but then why, why are you using a video wall because you could get a really nice so projector for a lot less you could get like a Christie or uh, a Barco for much less than the professional screens that don't have the bezel around them so I don't know why you're doing that Please tell me. I, I actually wrote a comment back to him to ask for why because this doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever unless you just really want to spend a lot of money. Yeah, doesn't make any sense to me. And you're going to get latency with a software-based solution that's going to cause you some problems. Okay, Din052 on churchmedia.net asks... 
VGA and HDMI, a video switcher combo. We presently have a computer with VGA out to a CAT5 converter. This then runs about 300 feet over CAT5 to a projector. The pastor wants to know if there's any way to hook up a switcher so that we could switch sources from the computer to a DVD player. This uh, switcher would uh, probably would have to have the VGA in port for the CAT5 converter unless someone has a brighter idea. So the switcher needs both VGA in and probably an HDMI in and video in port and a VGA port to feed the CAT5 converter. By the way, the CAT5 converter I believe is what's called active. Uh, it has a box at the computer and another one at the projector mounted in the ceiling. They both have power sources to operate. We would like to keep the CAT5 converter as we spent about $400 for the converter. Thanks, Dennis. Um, yeah. Kramer, K-R-A-M-E-R, -E makes a box that does exactly what you're saying. It's probably about two grand. I haven't looked at them recently, but they're in that range. Uh, so you maybe could get one for less used, but just make sure that it'll uh, take uh, VGA and HDMI in and spit out VGA, which might be a problem. It might go um, VGA and HDMI in and HDMI out or something screwy like that. And that could mess you up because HDMI is evil. I hate it. Um, <laughs> I really do not have feelings that are as strong as it comes across for HDMI. I just I want to emphasize how much HDMI isn't a helpful thing in live production. It's just not designed for it, quite frankly. So that's what I would look for is the box from Kramer. It's a switcher. So um, uh, so ATEM TV Studio. Video capture and streaming, two questions. First question, I'm new to Blackmagic's ATEM video, ATEM television studio, TVS, and we've found that with my setup running through a not particularly powerful Win7 laptops, I don't have the specs here, I cannot both stream to live stream and simultaneously capture the video output to the hard drive. Is this A, working as designed, B, a function of computing power, specs, etc., C, something else? Second question. Running capture tests, we have SD cameras. This is the answer to part of his question, by the way. Pay attention. In capture setup, there is a settings slider for quality, testing at various settings, 100%, 50%, 20%, 10%, resulted in different file sizes, but no difference in quality of the images. I didn't find any settings in Media Express, also part of his answer, which seemed to affect quality. I'm wondering if I am missing something, or if or, as I suspect is likely, this really is an issue only for HD inputs. Uh, and then as an example, he says, for one minute of capture without sounds, the file sizes are respectively 119 megs at 100%, 76 megs at 50%, 39 megs at 20%, and 26 at 10%. Um, well, you're right in that... Um, it's a function of quality. The The quality problem that you're running into is you have an SD source, so 480i, 480 lines of vertical resolution. I bet at 10% you're getting all the resolution you're going to get, It's and it's just how many frames, how many uh, samples, the bitrate, etc. If 
you increase those, you're going to get a much bigger file. But if, if at 10%, it's getting everything that it can get, trying to get more is just going to yield a bigger file size and no increase in quality. Um, the other thing that you're mentioning, that you can't both capture and stream at the same time, that's a function of your software. You're using uh, Media Express. Try instead to use Adobe Flash Media Live Encoder, which can do both. Uh, Media Express, I believe, can only record. Or perhaps it can only stream. The uh, ATEM Television Studio has a uh, USB output that is in fact just like a webcam. So the signal coming into the computer for all it knows is a webcam signal and as you can see if you've watched this network at all I record and stream all the time and I've got now granted it's not a Windows 7 computer it's a Mac running uh, Mavericks, which is the latest OS for Macintosh, but it's like a three-year-old laptop. So it's not even a three-year-old tower with all kinds of mad, crazy power. <laughs> Nothing like that. It's just a laptop. Now, it's a MacBook Pro, so it's not the consumer level, but it's pretty top-notch, uh, or it was three years ago, but today, not so much. So it can be done. Now, with that said, my computer almost maxes out when I do this. And I do this as SD, same as you. Um, so, you could run into problems. But, let me real quick. That's probably going to make YouTube cut this down. Ah! Curse you, YouTube! It was just my alarm! Um... much better now. See, I'm trying to be entertaining and it's coming off a little crazy. Woohoo! Um, so, I think it's absolutely possible with the right computer and the right software to record and stream at the same time, especially since you're not doing the heavy lifting of switching on board, which I am doing. I'm doing all those functions through uh, Wirecast. And so that's basically I think it's possible. It's less than ideal, I, I admit, but it is possible. So that's what I would look at if I were you. If you have any other questions, comments, or snide remarks, remember to head over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash contact and you can find uh, everything that I do there and I would uh, just love for you to uh, leave me a comment and I'll be happy to uh, give you some feedback next year uh, next week I am headed off to this freelance gig uh, hopefully I'll be in Washington DC uh, on Friday night uh, February 7th if for some reason you have uh, someone that you know and love that's going to this battle for the capital uh, cheerleading competition look for me you know what I look like okay talk to you later and uh, no matter what you're doing this week go out and change eternity <laughs>